Good afternoon. It's great to be with the Christ Covenant community and others here this afternoon as we've been sharing these fireside chats. I wanted to talk with you today about the word certainty. And I want to begin by reading from the book of James, James chapter 4. It goes like this, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him, it is sin. You know, we're all living in incredibly uncertain times. I know that the word certainty, uncertainty, has been the thing that's marked my life over the last number of months. feels like so many things have been up in the air. You might remember I moved to Charlotte at the end of January and left Sherry behind in Michigan. And then soon after I got here, the tornado came through and branch fell upon my car. Over the last month, Sherry and I have been house hunting, trying to find a more permanent place for us to live. And finally, Sherry moved down here at the end of March to move right into the teeth of COVID-19. And so we've been sheltered in place just like everybody else has. And so many times when we thought we had a plan for our life, uh, what we were going to do next, the Lord has had a different plan for us. And so many of us are feeling that kind of uncertainty in these days. Uh, for example, uh, students might be asking, when are we going to go back to school? Are we going to be able to go back to school in the fall? And seniors in high school and college are wondering, what is graduation going to look like? How am I going to make a, a college visit to that college that I want to go to? And will there even be on-campus college in the fall? Is my job stable? How am I going to pay the bills? Am I going to remain healthy? And all of that under this question, I think, that we all wonder about. When are things going to be going back to normal again? You know, there were people in James' day, probably rich Christian merchants, in the church who approached life with a posture of arrogant confidence and control. They seem so certain about tomorrow. They were saying things like this, today or tomorrow we'll go to such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. And James isn't saying that what was wrong with that approach to life is that they were planning ahead or they were thinking about the future. All those kinds of things are good things for us to be doing. Their problem is that they boasted, he says, about what tomorrow would, would bring. It's as if they thought they knew what was going to happen tomorrow. They were in charge, and James reminds them and us that our life is like a mist that is here today and can be gone tomorrow, that it's so much so often like an early morning fog that clouds the earth and when the sun comes out, everything kind of vanishes and goes away and so our life is. Our life can suddenly change just like that. And James then tells us how we ought to approach tomorrow. He says, we ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will do this or that. And he's not intending that we say that phrase every time before we venture out to do something. It's not saying that we have to say, I hope to get groceries this afternoon if the Lord wills. He's not encouraging us to do that. But he's also not intending for us to view life with a sense of resignation. His heart is that we would learn to rest in the perfect will of the Lord. If the Lord wills, Lord, what is your will? And we want your will to be done, whatever that is. We want to live our lives resting in the sovereign will of God over our lives. And isn't that the thing that's really certain about life? That God rules. 
that God reigns, that his will will be done, and that his will is always good for his children. I'm reminded of some of the uncertain things that have happened in my own life, particularly back in 2013 uh, when my dad passed away. My dad died on a Monday, and a few days later on Sunday, we gathered as a family at the funeral home for the visitation. And while we were at the funeral home, my 55-year-old sister collapsed in the funeral home and died of a brain aneurysm. She was brought to the hospital. She was put on life support. We had the funeral for my dad the next day. And then the following day, my sister was taken off life support, and her funeral happened on Saturday, just a few days after that. And one of the things that helped me through that time was a reminder of my faithful God, who is my almighty God and Father. I was helped so much by this question from the Heidelberg Catechism, reflecting on the Apostles' Creed. What do you believe when you say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? And here's the answer. That the eternal Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who out of nothing created heaven and earth and everything in them, who still upholds and rules them by his eternal counsel and providence, is my God and Father because of Christ the Son. And I trust him so much that I do not doubt he will provide whatever I need for body and soul and will turn to my good whatever adversity he sends me in this sad world. And he is able to do this because he is almighty God and he desires to do this because he is a faithful father. Friends, that's the place to go for certainty in these days. That our God is our almighty God who is able to do whatever is good for us. And our God is our faithful father who desires to do what is good for us. And I find that, I pray that you find hope and strength in those, two, in those two truths today, whatever it is that you may be facing or experiencing. So would you pray with me? Father, we thank you that you are our almighty God and that you're a faithful father. And on those two truths, we approach the future. We do not say, I'm going to do this tomorrow with a kind of arrogant confidence, but rather we rest in your sovereign will over our life, a will that is perfect, a will that is good. We praise you for these things, and we pray them in Jesus' name. Amen.